When the announcement came out that the iPhone 6S, a phone from 2015, would be receiving another major iOS update, that being iOS 15, I was a little skeptical that it would be able to even run well on the iPhone 6S. But here with my iPhone 6S Plus, I've been running the iOS 15 beta now for a couple weeks, and I can say that my expectations were a bit wrong, actually. Hi, welcome to ZTCC. My name's David, and today we're gonna be taking a look at the iPhone 6S running a beta of iOS 15 to help you guys decide whether it's worth updating to or not this upcoming fall when the official update comes out. I can say that with confidence, the iPhone 6S and the 6S Plus run the iOS 15 beta quite well actually, and I haven't really had any major hiccups. Of course, there is some weird bugs with the iOS 15 beta because it is beta software, but I bet that a lot of these bugs are going to be polished out after the next few weeks. So it shouldn't be too much of an issue that you update to it when it comes out in the fall. However, there is a choice that Apple's going to be giving us, and that is basically that you can decide that you want to stay on iOS 14, however, you still want to get those security updates. So if you don't want to update to iOS 15, you can still stay on iOS 14 and continue to receive the security updates. So it's not forcing you to go to iOS 15 to get the security updates. That's something really important for this year and also future iOS updates. Now with the iOS 15 beta on this iPhone, I can say that there hasn't really been any instances where it's locked up too much. And honestly, I was really surprised considering this is you know, six years old now. I think that the biggest drawback to this software though, running on this old of the phone, is that it is quite taxing on the battery. So for example, the battery on my iPhone 6S here, this is a 6S Plus and it had its battery replaced around 2018, I'd say. It's at 86% maximum capacity already. So I can typically go a couple hours with this and not have to worry, but you know, for most people who own this phone, they probably haven't had the battery replaced or it's been a while too. So you might be under 80% already. And if you are under 80%, you already know that the battery isn't really gonna last that long. And with iOS 15, the battery doesn't last as long as it did with iOS 14. So that is something to consider. Now with some of the features that you get with iOS 15, there is some things that I'm just like, uh, I don't know, it doesn't seem like it's that groundbreaking to me. Like the new notification tray, it doesn't seem to be, you know, anything too different. I mean, now we have a more aesthetically pleasing notification tray, but other than that, it hasn't really improved all too much, I'd say. I think that the marketing for iOS 15 was a lot more exciting, if you want to say, just so that it got people talking about it. But in all honesty and, and use using it, it's not really too different. Of course, there's also now the focus modes that you can use with the iPhone success and also all the other new devices that are gonna be running iOS 15 this fall. And they're okay. I mean, you can set what apps you want to have notifications from, if you wanna notify people when you're in a certain focus mode. But other than that, it's just a special do not disturb mode. It doesn't seem to be anything terribly special, but it is here. So if that is something that matters to you, you do get it on the iPhone success. Also, the new maps is nice, like there's a lot more details on it, but I would say that it isn't like, you know, groundbreaking. Like, I don't feel like a lot of people are going to be using Apple Maps still, necessarily. Other than that, though, it still looks nice. <laughs> there's been a lot of, like, aesthetic changes, mostly. The software runs okay on it, and honestly, it hasn't been too bad. I mean, the first beta, when I had it first installed on this iPhone, it was rough, I'm not gonna lie. There was a lot of bugs, so there'd be times when certain UI aspects of it would, you know, overlay on top of each other and you couldn't get out, so I had to restart. But now that it's been a couple weeks and there's been a couple more beta software updates, things have leveled out and I don't really have any issues anymore. Mostly just battery life. I mean, just sitting here, it's been about, I don't know, maybe five minutes of recording, and I've already lost like 5% of my battery. So that is something to consider. That's like, what, 1% per minute? So that's <laughs> that's not terribly good. There is some apps that do take a little bit longer to load. Of course, like the camera is gonna take a little bit longer, but that's just, you know, the fact that it's an older phone. So do adjust your expectations for this phone. 
it's not going to be like your, you know, flagship phones, like your iPhone 12 Pro Max or even an 11 Pro Max. Those phones are newer, so they do have a lot more newer processors and GPUs and, you know, everything that can accelerate it. But this is a phone from 2015. You're running the A9, you're running 2 gigabytes of RAM, and that's what you've got. So that is something to consider. This is the lowest supported iPhone on iOS 15, but it isn't the slowest device on iOS 15. Now that title would belong to, I believe the iPad mini 4, which has the A8 chip. I also have an iPad Air 2, and when iOS 15 comes out, I'm gonna be doing an update on that so that you guys can see how that runs on that device since that is the second oldest device no, it's actually the oldest device that can run iOS 15, but it's not the slowest because it has the A8X. So if you are interested in that, let me know in the comments down below and I will make sure to make a video on that when iOS 15 does come out. But overall, the iPhone 6S runs iOS 15 pretty well and I don't have any real issues with it other than there hasn't really been too many software changes on this iPhone compared to the newer generation. Of course, you do get some more FaceTime features and messages features, but other than that, a lot of the things that have been changed is mostly aesthetic. And I don't feel like iOS 15 as a whole was a super groundbreaking software update. So I do feel like that's why they did push it onto the iPhone success because it hasn't had much change. You know what I mean? Other than that, if you are rocking an iPhone success, let me know in the comments down below. And I'd like to hear what you guys think. Are you guys gonna be staying on iOS 14? Or are you gonna be updating this fall to iOS 15? Let me know in the comments down below, and if you liked what you saw, leave a like down below, and consider subscribing for more content just like this. Thanks for watching!